Now, something that we're going to meet later on in the playlist uh, is complex numbers. And part of that um, later on is De Moivre's theorem. Now, De Moivre's theorem says that cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of n is equivalent to cosine of n theta plus i sine of n theta. Um, now, that won't make much sense to you if you haven't done any complex numbers and you haven't met De Moivre's theorem before. Okay, so um, this video is here because we can actually prove this to be true um, when n is a positive integer as part of proof by induction. Okay, now this is actually true for all n uh, belonging to the real numbers, but we're just going to prove it for n being a positive integer, so just uh, some values of n. Okay. So um, you probably want to go to that part in playlist and go over complex numbers and De Moivre's theorem first um, in, before getting to this stage, because otherwise it's not going to really make a whole lot of sense. But I'm putting it here because it fits neatly in with the proof by induction. OK, so stage one, we need to prove that it's true, oh, prove true for n equals 1. OK, so the left hand side of this would say we've got cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of 1, which of course is cosine theta plus i sine theta. The right hand side is cosine of 1 times theta plus i sine of 1 times theta, which of course is just cosine theta plus i sine theta. So left hand side equals right hand side, and so it is true for n equals 1. So step 2. Assume true for n equals k. So cosine theta plus i sine, sorry for, uh, yes, yeah, sorry, lost track of what I was writing there. So cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of k is equivalent to cosine of k theta plus i sine k theta. OK, so we have that. Now, we need to prove that it's true for n is equal to k plus 1. OK, so cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of k plus 1 is equal to cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of k times cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of 1. Now, we know we are assuming that cosine theta plus i sine theta to the power of k is this. So we have cosine of k theta plus i sine k theta and we're times that by the cosine theta plus i sine theta. OK, so we have cosine k theta times cosine theta. We've got cosine k theta times i sine theta, so plus i uh, sine uh, which way round shall we have it? Let's let's put it around this way. Cosine k theta, so a consistent sine theta. Then we've got i sine k theta times cosine theta. So plus i sine k theta cosine theta. And then we've got i sine k theta times i sine theta. Now i times i, i squared is minus 1. So take away sine k theta sine theta. Right. So let's um, 
get the real part together first. So we've got this cosine k theta, cosine theta, and the takeaway sine k theta, sine theta. Okay, so that's the real part. Plus the imaginary part, um, which is the cosine k theta, sine theta, plus sine k theta, cosine theta. Okay, like that. Now, should be spotting these as compound angle formulae now, okay? So, we've got the, co co the, um, sorry, the compound angle formulae. Uh, we've got sine of a plus or minus b is sine a cos b plus or minus cosine a sine b. And cosine a plus or minus b is cosine a cosine b minus plus sine a sine b. Okay, so they were the compound angle formulae. So here we've got cosine cosine sine sine cosine cosine sine sine. We've got a minus in the middle, so that means that this must be a plus. So we have cosine of a plus b, so k theta plus theta. Plus I times, now we've got cosine sine, sine cosine, which is this. We've got a plus in the middle, so that must be a plus. So we've got sine of k theta plus theta. This, of course, inside can be factorised. So we've got cosine of uh, k plus 1 times theta plus I sine of k plus 1 times theta. Right, so this is precisely what we would expect from having the k, the n replaced with k plus 1. Because we've got the n replaced with k plus 1 here. Now we've got the n replaced with k plus 1 because we've got k plus 1 lots of theta and k plus 1 lots of theta in there as well. And so it is true. So as it is true for n equals 1, and if true for n equals k, then it is true for n equals k plus 1. So it is true for all n greater than or equal to 1. So as a reminder, this proves that just for n is greater than or equal to 1, OK, um, but the theorem is true for all real values of n, OK? Uh, and this is how proof by induction uh, can be used at this stage.